Jesus is talking to his disciples and a man comes up to him and he says, Teacher, what good thing must I do to enter the kingdom of God? Now, Jesus is, now takes this opportunity to, to teach his disciples what Christianity is all about. Now, be, bearing in mind that this is before, this is still under the Old Testament law, before Jesus has died, and the New Testament has come into play. So, under the New Testament, we know that when, when you want to enter the kingdom of God, you go through a process of baptism, etc. Now, under the Old Testament, it wasn't like that. They were busy with sacrifices and a few other things. So, this is what Jesus says to the young man in Matthew chapter 24. Then Jesus said, Truly I tell you, it is hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. So if we just back that up a bit, that's when Jesus is talking to his disciples and telling him what is going on here. So the, the rich man said, uh, what must I do to, what good things can I do? And then Jesus said, well, you mustn't murder, you mustn't commit adultery, you mustn't steal, you mustn't uh, give false testimony, honor your father and mother, and, and love your neighbor as yourself. And the, the rich, the, this rich young man said, well, you know, I've, I've done all that stuff. And Jesus said, well, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven and come and follow me. Well, Guy was not too happy with this, so he turned around and he grumbled off and, and, and off he went. And that's when Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, it is harder for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again I tell you, it's easier for the camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Now a couple of weeks ago, Michiel gave us a couple of lessons and uh, deciphering some of these difficult interpretations of, of the Bible. And one of these, this is what one of the interpretations that come out. Now, the, the imagery, obviously, as you can see, a massive big camel trying to get through the eye of a needle, and you can imagine a, a sewing needle and trying to get through that eye. But there are other images that, uh, that I'd like to share with you. And... Um, this is one of them. Now, the cities in the Old Testament, they were all fortified, so they had walls around them. And to get into the cities, they had these massive big gates. And during the day, the gates were open, and people would flow in and out of the cities. They would come in and go out. They would take all their oxen and their, their cattle and their, their camels, and they would move in and out of the city gates. And they would travel by camel most of the time, and so their camels and their donkeys would have lots of stuff attached to them. They would be burdened down. They would have their goods, etc. So when the gates were open, no problem. But at night, they would shut the gates to the cities. Now, to get in, they had these little doors. Now, you can see the gates to the city. The big gates open during the day, and at night, they would only allow the small gate to be opened up for protection. Now, to get a camel through the small gate, okay, they called that the eye of the needle. Okay? So for the camel to get through the eye of the needle, it is very difficult for the camel to get through the small door, especially if the camel has got all of the stuff attached to it. So what they would have to do, they would have to strip off all of the camel's goods off its back and try and squeeze it through the eye of the needle. So it is more difficult for a camel to get through the eye of a needle. So it's easy, sorry, it's easier for a camel to get through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to get into to heaven or we can say for a person who is carrying burdens to get into heaven. Now we talk about the rich man's burdens because generally people who are wealthy have a lot more stuff to carry. Now, if I look around the audience today, we're all rich. We're all extremely rich. We live in the top 1% of the, 
of people in the world. And as a result of that, we generally we, we have burdens. And we noticed that a lot when we had the recent flooding and our stuff got damaged. That's the burdens that we have. And we tend to spend a lot of time worrying about stuff and not worrying about spiritual issues. And so what Jesus is teaching his disciples here, he says, get rid of the stuff. Get rid of the stuff. If you want to come to me, you've got to look for spiritual stuff. And to get into the city where there is refuge, to get into the city, you have to go through the eye of the needle. You've got to get rid of the stuff. We're not saying sell all your possessions like the, like the, the, teach, the teaching was in the Old Testament, but the teaching here is you cannot come to Jesus with burdens. Lay your burdens down. Get rid of them. Rely on Jesus. Allow him to take care of you and feel that, that peace that only comes when you take away the burdens of life. Allow yourself to go through the eye of the needle into the safe haven of the city of refuge. We're going to sing a song now which has quite a lot of meaning to this. It's called Lay Your Burdens Down. Let's sing it together. And after this, we're going to participate in the same ceremony that Jesus took place the, date, the day that he was betrayed, when he was sitting at the Passover with his disciples and he broke bread and he took the, the wine and he said, remember these, for this is my body that's broken and the wine is for the blood that was shed so that I can take your burdens, I can take them off you and that you can enter the kingdom through me, come through that eye of the needle. Lay your